Hey guys, today we are going to talk about what made Modern Masters 1 so successful and why today something like Modern Masters 2017 doesn't quite have the appeal. Now, there's many reasons, including the fact that Modern Masters was new, it was novel, but I'm going to pinpoint it into two reasons. One, the packs were $6.99, they were not $9.99 a pack. That makes a lot of difference. It might just be $3, but to many people, that's the cost of another pack. And to have packs at $10, that's the cost of what most people pay for a draft. So when you have go from $6.99 to $9.99, may not seem like a big difference, but for the value of the pack, it actually is a huge difference. Now, Modern Masters was blessed with many valuable uncommons and commons. Assuming the pack value is $6.99, there are Kitchen Finks, Path to Exile, Street Wraith, which is a common, Manamorphosis, Spell Snare. Those five cards would make back the cost of a pack. Therefore, the value was always defined by the uncommon and common slots, being more than they were. So when we look at today's Iconic Masters, especially Eternal Masters, it just does not have the value that Modern Masters has. Plus the fact when you increase the price from $6.99 to $9.99, almost a 50% increase in price and have less potentially valuable on commons and commons, there's more volatility. So if I were to pinpoint why Modern Masters is still so cheap today, Modern Masters 2017 is so cheap today, while boxes of Modern Masters, original Modern Masters, are way more expensive than they came out to be, it comes down to value. The fact that you have an uncommon in Kitchen Finks, the fact that you have four uncommons and one common that will make the value of your booster pack and then you also get a foil and then the rare slash mythic slot is incredible for a set. I am always in favor of including as much value as you can. There are always very good uncommons and very good commons that you can put in any new set. Yes, they will tank in price, but eventually they will go up and that is where you will find most of your value if you played during Modern Masters. You'll find it in your uncommons, you'll find it in your commons. The Tamagoyf got another reprint, well it got actual, actually two, two other reprints. And who knows what's going to happen to the high value cards, but I know Path to Exile, no matter how many times it's going to be reprinted, still like a $9, $10 card, that's really quite incredible. You can see from the original price, it was still a $6 card. So it still paid for very much the pack. And when you're opening booster packs, this is something that's very important. A, the value of the pack and how much you paid for it. So for $9.99, I would expect to get more value than I would expect for a pack that was $6.99. And secondly, the volatility. Because commons and uncommons they happen, uncommons happen three times a pack, and then commons, I believe it's 12, 11, I don't know, it's a lot. You are likely to get some of these valuable stuff, but if you wanted to pinpoint everything on a valuable mythic planeswalker, such, such as Amaket, or a valuable one of the gods, the green one in particular, the chances are you're not going to make back the value of the pack. It's just not going to happen because you are not even likely to get that mythic. So when people put value mythics, Gideon, Ally of Zendikar, the Ceaseless Hunger, Liliana, the Last Hope, which I do like. I like her a lot. And I'll explain in another video why I feel like if you can get her at a low price point, she is going to be a home run for a long time coming. Tons and tons of the new sets from, especially from, I guess the masterpiece sets. Any set with a masterpiece, the only value is really set in the mythics. Yes, maybe you have 
a walking ballista. Maybe you have um, another card like smuggler's copter before it was banned being quite valuable. But the majority of your value of cards over $10 will be in mythics. Therefore, for you to open a pack of $4, you have to hit one of those mythics. And you might say, whoa, what about the rares and uncommons? There is only one main exception to that, and that's Fatal Puss and A for Revolt. It's a big one because it's uncommon, but it is that. It is an exception. My solution is to make very good uncommons in uncommons. They know what is valuable. It's not like they don't know what the secondary market is, given what they choose to reprint and given what they choose to put in certain it's not by random they chose Kalia, the Vast, to reprint. If they picked any other deck and commander, original commander, that was not Kalia, I don't think uh, Commander Anthology sells nearly as well. So Manamorphous, $7. And that's what you like to see, because if you open a box of this, and then you traded the rares and mythics, or you did something with it, you would still have these cards today. Like these are stashed away in bulk and they have been steadily increasing and increasing in price. And that has that is what makes Modern Masters 1 so much better. A, $6.99 a pack. I feel that's super important. If you were to jump from $6.99 to $9.99, then I would expect, oh, no, 40% more value, right? Because I'm paying 40% paying more. That didn't happen with Eternal Masters. That did not happen with Iconic Masters. And that didn't happen with Modern Masters 2000. And oh, well, that's not going to happen with Iconic Masters. Wow, I already assumed too much, right? Oh, uh, Modern Masters 2017 and 2015. You don't see the commons and uncommons being as good and I don't see them long term. So people say that Amaket is a powerful set. They say that it's really awesome and you know everyone loves it. Theme wise for casual players, it's great. But if you had money to put into something, I would not put it into Amaket. I might just buy the anthologies for Commander. I think that's gonna hold value. A lot of those cards are unique and hard to come by. And not everyone's gonna want, even people who have them they're going to value them highly because Kalia and Kalia being the one prime example, I just don't see those. Like I see a lot of cards, but I don't see Kalia's. So even the, oh, here's another common, which is worth about $6. Uh, remember, $6.99 was a retail price. So you could buy boxes slightly cheaper when it came out. You have the emblem being worth six dollars, almost six dollars itself, and that is a common. So lots of great value in this particular set. Even if you got rid of all the rares and mythics, and you had a really bad mythic and you had a really bad rare, and maybe your foil was not great, you can still make up the value easily from you know lightning helix and then path to exile. Maybe you get both in a pack. That's a very good pack. Maybe a Lightning Helix and an Elspeth, or even just one Street Wraith, right? It would be enough. I hope that they learn from this. It's all about if they want to sell packs, instead of being all gimmicky about the masterpieces, just give good cards. Just print good cards in it. You know what is good. Like It's not a mystery that Thought Seize would be great. No, it would be great. People would say, oh, it's too powerful. It's yeah, it was too powerful when it came out. You had mono black dominate, right? You will always have a number one deck. You will over, always have a A for work Marvel deck, which is more dominant, in my opinion, than Sahili Ra. Crazy cat combo deck. And which is more dominant, in my opinion, than the Smuggler Copter decks. Although Smuggler Copter, you could say, was in a lot of decks. Even uh, Eternal Witness is five bucks. So like... You could hit Eternal Path and then Lightning Bolt, and that is just insane, right? Or Kitchen Fink, Street Rave, Path, some combination of all of these cards I'm showing you, and you would be super happy regardless of, and you would be lost, less volatile. 
So here's the situation. It used to be um, a lot of my friends opened packs and they understood that they're not gonna get their value back. And the more packs they open, just like when you go to a casino, if you spend one hour in a casino, maybe you win some money. If you spend 10 hours at a casino, probably not. If you spend 10 days at a casino, yeah, the house always wins. Because that small percentage, let's say in blackjack, you play perfectly. You have a 49% chance of winning. Well, one hand, that's not bad. It's almost break even. But if you play a thousand hands, eventually you will lose because of probability. It's like coin flipping and stuff. So I like lava spike is five bucks. I mean, you could get you could get a lava spike and that would be probably almost enough for the rest of the... I, it's incredible just the value. I was trying to figure out why I don't like Modern Masters 2017 when I'm, you know, all the values in the fetch lands and the mythics and everything looks good, right? And I don't know. I don't know why I'm not buying more of it at $180 a box because that seems very good to me. And why, like, when Modern Masters came out, no one could get a hold of it. Yeah, you might say supply, there's lots of demand, very, very little supply, but why has it stood the test of time when I don't believe Modern Masters 2017 will, will stand the test of time? I think it's the uncommons and commons. I think it's the fact that it's six ninety nine a pack, and because of the uncommons and commons, you get to that six ninety nine value quite easily, the MSRP value, and on top of that, most importantly, there's little volatility. People are always told to buy singles. You never hear people saying, oh, the financially good decision is to buy booster packs. It's not. The financial decision is to buy singles. But if you can open enough singles from a pack, have fun, that's additional bonus, and get something of value from the pack that you can easily trade for something that you need, that's the ideal booster box for me. Anyway, leave me a comment below. Bye, guys.